In this week's manly episode of Dragon Ball Super, Master Roshi returns to the forefront to remind everyone who the number one original badass martial arts master is. And he even manages to surpass his very own limits by conquering his raging libido and fighting against not just one, but two sexy alien ladies. He then proves that this old dog still has a few new tricks when he he battles against Universe 4's Ganos, a warrior who gets stronger by the second and has a transformation which turns him into a giant electrical bird man. All that and more in this week's awesome episode of Dragon Ball Super. Before I go any further in the review, let me just get the bitching out of the way because I don't like talking about negative stuff. If I only had one complaint about this episode, it's that the animation and the artwork kinda sucked. There were a few times where the action scenes lacked a lot of polish and they didn't really have a lot of impact behind them, if you know what I mean. And originally, I was ready to hate this episode, as the title made it seem like Master Roshi was not actually going to make it out of his battles in this episode, and just like Krillin, he was going to end up on the bench of shame. However, that ended up not happening at all, and it made me realize, hell yes, we're going to get to see some more Roshi action. And really, aside from the action in this episode, the best thing about it is the fact that Master Roshi, remember, the super perverted, goofy character from Dragon Ball, who at first was really important, but then turned into that ridiculous side character that we all know and love from the Dragon Ball series, has now actually surpassed his limits, become even more powerful than he was before, and even in the most badass fashion, acknowledged his two students, Goku and Krillin, that he has allowed himself to become stronger, and he never faltered in the entire episode. I was waiting for that moment when he was going to be fighting against these two alien girls, where he was just going to go into the old Master Roshi shtick that we have seen so many damn times. The entire time, he kept his composure, and when it seemed like that was actually going to happen, he was actually just tricking his opponents. It was satisfying as hell to finally see Roshi be badass again, and that's definitely the reason to check out this week's episode. That and the fact that he takes out three fighters from Universe 4. That's how freaking awesome Master Roshi is. And all of his opponents are really cool. The first two, if they had names, I didn't hear them. But they do have some unique abilities, like this one green-skinned girl who can create key weapons. Basically, she's able to use her key and transform it into stuff like spears and giant hammers. And she also has the power of seduction. She actually tries to seduce uh, Roshi in this episode, but it doesn't work. He just powers himself up, gets super pumped up, and takes her out in the most ridiculous and over-the-top fashion possible. And frankly, it's satisfying as hell. The fact that he's willing to go this far to actually take out his opponents and just put on such a crazy and destructive act, it is awesome. That and the entire speech that he gives about him actually finally getting over his greatest weakness. His second opponent, they almost make it seem like it is going to give him a little bit of trouble, and I have to give credit where credit is due. We've not really seen too many fighters like this in the Dragon Ball series, those that rely on techniques which involve illusions. This is a fight that actually kind of reminded me of something from Naruto. There's this one girl from Universe 4 who I don't even know how to describe what she looks like outside of like a cross between a snake and a fish woman, but she She's able to use these talisman techniques, which are created with her key, which she can do to trap people in these like weird dimensions that are filled with all of these illusions. She can utilize hundreds of different attacks and illusions at once, and she's tricking Roshi into basically thinking that he's going to walk over the edge of the arena, or that he's running up the top of the pillar and runs into a giant version of this fighter, and then eventually she traps him in the darkness, explaining and monologuing, of course, that she's from a planet of darkness-dwelling creatures. Then Roshi just freaking lights her up and destroys her again so easily. Basically, this was the appetizer to watching Roshi just kick the shit out of this one guy at the end of the episode. A character who's made a couple of appearances even before the Tournament of Power, and that of course is Ganos. If you don't remember, this was the character who was a part of that plot to take out Frieza and Goku before the tournament. He was working under Catella, and in this episode he finally reveals what his true abilities are, which are to transform into a giant bird man. That's seriously what he transforms into. I don't know the logic behind it, 
but at least it's fun and ridiculous in the best way possible. Like, literally, he's this little, like, goblin-looking dude, and he transforms into a giant super buff man with feathers and a bird for a face. It's weird as hell, and he's just basically super destructive and powerful, and he can create, like, these weird keyblades from his hands, and of course he's covered with all of this electricity, which he uses not only to fight against his opponents, but also to actually shock himself. There's a scene where Roshi brings back a classic technique, which is his hypnosis, and I love seeing the returns of these type of techniques, by the way. Speaking of which, I didn't even mention that he used the Mafuba technique to take out that one girl from the Dark Planet. Like, that was a really great callback. And it makes sense that he could use a technique like that because, of course, it doesn't kill the opponent, it just seals them away. But it did cause a lot of controversy, like the fact that he's actually technically using an item or a weapon in order to help him out in battle. You could argue that the Mafuba is a technique that has to rely on using key, but you do have to place that in an object. So, in a way, Roshi did cheat and get away with it because the Zenos were entertained and that's the way it goes. So, these fighters can now just basically cheat and as long as it looks cool enough, they're basically going to get away with it. But let's get back on track here. You have Ganos, who, like I said, is covered with all this electrical stuff, and he's being hypnotized by Roshi, and he decides to actually shock himself so that he can sort of distract his mind from being hypnotized by Master Roshi. He starts to fight back, punching the fuck out of him, sending him flying into walls and rubble. And this is where the best part of the episode takes place. Master Roshi takes off the glasses so you know he is fucking serious. He starts to pump himself up and hits this huge... Huge, gigantic Kamehameha blast right at Ganos, which sends him flying immediately out of the ring. It's a satisfying moment, and they almost make it seem like Roshi is going to die, although there's no way that he's going to die. You see him at the very end of Dragon Ball Z when they're having that tournament when Oob comes back and fights against Goku, so there really wasn't a lot of dread that he was actually going to sacrifice his life, despite the fact that the title said that. But still, it actually did kind of catch me off guard for a moment. I was like, are we witnessing the next death of Master Roshi? It would be like the third time in the series that he's actually been killed. So you have to imagine why that's not working as much as it used to. But still, he is woken up by Goku, who manages to resuscitate him with some Super Saiyan Blue powers. And both he and Roshi walk off into the battlefield, continuing to battle against all sorts of opponents. By the way, Goku was fighting against this one dude who was some sort of like weird liquid metal blue alien thing. I want to know what the story is on this guy. Maybe in the next episode. So, what's the rundown on this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super? Roshi is no longer relegated to being a stupid, funny side character. He is officially more badass than Krillin. That's right. I just... Never expected that Roshi would have actually, like, followed through with his training, and that's what made this episode so satisfying. Because at first it was all just so jokey and ridiculous, and sort of harkened back to the comedy aspects of the original Dragon Ball series, and I thought that he was totally going to be just destroyed by these chicks, but he managed to fight past them and even go up and against an opponent that could have potentially become a real problem in this tournament with his ability to get even stronger. And as he always does, he manages to sacrifice a lot of his strength and even putting his own life on the line. That's why Master Roshi has always been such a great character. He's such a classic archetype of the old wise master. He's Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's Jiraiya from Naruto. It's the type of character that we see told in stories all of the time, and that's because they're incredibly epic. Epic, and they're always instrumental in making the, the characters, the main characters of the series, much stronger. However, the twist is here. Now Roshi is finally starting to get stronger himself, and he's been influenced by his very own students. And that's a very powerful thing. Like I said, though, the only thing that kind of sucks about this episode is the animation and the artwork. There's this one moment where Roshi flies towards a rock, and it just, it, it had no impact behind it, and it really should have. There were just some moments that could have looked better. But aside from that, this was a satisfying episode for Master Roshi, and it actually grew on his character. That's like the most important thing here. He even gained the respect of Beerus. That's how important that was in this episode. So, loved it. Can't wait to see more. I'm going to give this episode right here a 4 out of 5. I'm knocking it down one point, because like I said, some of the animation and artwork sucked. But everything else that was here, whether it be Roshi's growth or just the action scenes themselves and the ridiculous people he was fighting against, that was all just super fun. Check it out, guys. You heard my thoughts about this week's episode. Now I want to hear your thoughts. Make sure to tell me what you guys thought about this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super. Were you excited to see a Master Roshi-centric episode? So were you surprised by his growth? Did you like seeing the 
the return of some classic techniques. What about the character of Ganos? Why does he transform into a bird? What the hell is up with that? And what did you really like or not like about this episode and what you want to see from the rest of the Tournament of Power arc? Tell me all your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things Dragon Ball Super and anime and manga related. Make sure to share this video with your friends and make sure to power up a super powerful ultimate Kamehameha and hit that like button. It's really easy to do and it helps out our videos a lot. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and as always, stay dandy, baby.